Let's pretend for a moment that we're trying to develop a new law of physics, a particular kind of law of physics called a conservation law. A thing is said to be conserved, a quantity is said to be conserved in nature if it doesn't change in time, if it's the same now, then, and later. So let's imagine we're, we're trying to develop a little conservation law that describes um, motion. Well, here we have a billiard ball, and uh, let me roll the ball across the, the little track here at constant speed, constant speed. So it's moving at constant speed in a straight line. And let's define a quantity called kinetic energy. This is the energy of its motion. And it'll be one-half times the mass of the ball times how fast it's going squared. And let's uh, play with the idea that maybe that's a law of nature, that kinetic energy during motions and of, of uh, systems of, of particles, maybe that kinetic energy is a conserved quantity. It was for a time thought to be so. So if I watch the ball as it rolls across the uh, little track, as it rolls across the track, the mass of the ball is not changing. The one half is not changing. And if I do it, uh, it looks like the speed of the ball is not changing. As far as I can tell, it's not. So one half, the mass times the square of the speed of the ball, seems to be the same the beginning and later as it rolls across the track. Kinetic energy is conserved during that motion. But watch this. What if I let it go up the slope? Now as it comes and approaches the hill, it has kinetic energy. It has speed and mass. But as it goes up the slope, there is a point where it stops. It still has the mass, but it now has no speed. And so it has no kinetic energy at that point. But you let it go and it uh, regains some of it. Well, that one experiment, just one clean repeatable experiment, demonstrates that our little incipient law of physics that kinetic energy is conserved is in fact not true. It did work as long as the ball rolled across the plane level, but as soon as we introduce this idea of rolling up the plane, then we see that kinetic energy is not conserved. It's one thing here, a different thing there, and then back. So if we're going to get a law of physics out of this, we're going to have to modify this one, go back and, and uh, fix it. As long as I've got these other planes here, let me uh, show you some other motions. and We kind of look at those for a moment. Look at that. I mean, that's fantastic. Watch that. Watch this. This is, this is fantastic. Watch it again. The billiard ball remembers where you released it. You release it up here, and that's where it comes back to. You release it here, and that's where it comes back to. That's the smartest billiard ball I've ever seen. I have a dog that's not that smart. You know, let him go, and he never comes back. But the billiard ball knows. Well, maybe we could fool it. That's nice and symmetric. Let me put it on this track, which is long, and then there's kind of a steeper part there. It'll never remember now. And down it goes, and I'll be darned. Comes back where you let it go. And if you do it here, that's where it comes back. Well, we'll really fool. We'll put a hump in there. We'll put a hump right in the middle. It'll never get back. It'll never remember. See you later. You'll never come back. But I'll be darned, it came back. Well, you probably realize that the pool ball, the billiard ball, is really not all that intelligent. But there's something telling it what to do. And it has something to do with how high we lift it. So perhaps it's a conservation law. Perhaps we'll go back to this idea of uh, kinetic energy and uh, amend the idea to add something to do with how high we lift the ball. When we lift the ball up to put it on the track, we don't give it motion yet. But by lifting it up, we give it potential for motion. 
And when we let it go, that motion kind of appears. So when we lift it up, we give it potential for motion, even though it doesn't yet have motion. And how high we lift it has something to do with how much potential that we have given it. We modify our idea of conservation of kinetic energy by adding a, defining a second kind of energy. We'll call this gravitational potential energy. And the amount of gravitational potential energy that we give to an object when we lift it up is a product of its weight times its height. And when we give it that potential and it starts to roll down the track, then as it goes lower and lower, the amount of gravitational potential energy is decreasing. But even as the gravitational potential energy decreases, the amount of kinetic energy increases. So you can kind of think of this energy, this conserved thing, which is the sum of the kinetic plus the gravitational potential, as kind of being like water that you put into two buckets. You've got a kinetic energy bucket, you've got a gravitational potential energy bucket, but you only have so much water. It can all be in this bucket, it can all be in that bucket, or some could be in this bucket and some in that. So now watch the ball go down, but think of it in terms of the sum of the two energies being conserved. As one decreases, the other increases, and that's how the ball remembers where to return to.